Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. about banditos bandits spanish style okay now i often rail on games for their lack of theme in them you know the games where the theme is just a thin veneer on top of a soulless game mechanic that is not the case here i think the theme is absolutely necessary uh, well it's but i mean it's like immersed in the game right. you don't um almost Okay, wait a minute. Are we getting ahead of ourselves? Yes. Let's look at the game. Okay. This is a map of the game, and you can see that it shows the bottom half of the United States, or at least the southwestern United States, and then the top of Mexico. It's kind of curved, which is a little odd, but not that big of a deal. Each person is going to take a gas gauge, which they're going to be using one of their cubes on to show if it's full or empty. And then each player is also going to take a character who they will play the game with. So each character has a special ability. Some, it, sometimes there's two people. Because there's two people, uh, they're going to need to have a car or a motorcycle with a sidecar. And so there's different people and they're, you know, your typical high school dropout pumpkin and honey bunny, mucho carne, the knickknacks, Misty and Guido, the cleaner, Captain Redbeard. You know, there's just different people. So the cleaner starts with the 45 automatic handgun. Uh, different people start with different weapons and cars. This guy doesn't have to pay for weapons, high school dropout. She can draw three cards instead of two. And so there's a few um, cards that will go to people who start. But regardless, you'll take one of your colored cubes, and you're going to put on your gas gauge, and then you'll put the other cube on your hometown. So your other cube, you might start in San Antonio. That might be your hometown. And then play begins. At the beginning of each turn, you can take an illegal action if you like to, or you can go straight to the legal actions. If you take an illegal action, the biggest one is pulling a heist. We'll come back to that one. But you can steal from the discard pile. There will be a discard pile made up of many different cards, and you might want some of those cards in the discard pile. Well, you simply are going to roll a 12-sided die, and you need to roll higher than a number card that you're digging down to get. So if I want to steal this 75 Norton 850 from the top of the pile, I would need to roll a 2 or higher. Uh, and if I want to steal this card, that was the second card down, and so on and so forth. Now you're going to be drawing these cards, and you're going to be getting money. When you get money, you will put that money directly in front of you because you're going to need that money to legitimately buy these things. Another thing you can do is you can steal gas from a gas station and you'll have to make a, a roll to steal that and fill up your gas tank. But let's say you decide to go with legal actions. Well, one thing you can do is you can draw two cards. And like I said, there's all kinds of cards in the deck. There's weapons, there's vehicles, and there's money. And hopefully you draw money. Uh, you can also remove a heat marker if you've done no illegal actions this turn. Let's talk about heat. Heat, it happens whenever you do an illegal action. Your character might get heat on them for taking an action. When you try a heist, your character will get heat on it. Your vehicle that you're using will have heat on it. And you'll also put a heat on the city that you were trying to rob. Let's say you were trying to rob in Monterey down here. So there's heat on all three of these when you try a heist, but as the game goes by, whenever you try to do different actions, it will add to the number that you need to roll because the more heat on you. So you can take one of these heat tokens off your character if you've done no illegal actions that turn. You could also move along the highway. You see there's lots of spaces here and you'll have a certain speed that you have with your vehicle as you're traveling. If you have no vehicle, you can pay and take a train and, and through America or you can simply hitchhike, which is kind of a pain in the neck. When you're crossing the border, you got to pay two extra to the crossing border guy. You can also buy and sell stuff. You can buy new items and put them in front of you. If I want to buy this gun, I would have to pay $50 and put that in front of me. And I can buy vehicles and other things. I can also buy tips. There's a whole 
a whole ton of stuff in here, like for inside information here. I can pay $100 for this and it will tell me the night security guard has a phobia of cockroaches. So I can use this information when I'm robbing uh, the bank in Reynosa. Now, this is all about making a heist pool. If you have a weapon, if you have a full gas tank, if you have a car, and if you're in one of the Mexican towns, you can try to rob it. To rob it, you have to roll higher than all your heat on your weapons, on your person, and on the town that you're robbing. And if you roll successfully, then hooray, you get to draw a certain number of cards from the top of this deck. And let's make an observation here. Do you see these two different decks of cards? Um, they're different, and they're to be drawn differently. This is the green deck, this is the red deck. Yes, on this video, you're like, oh, obviously they look very different. They really don't, especially in bad lighting. This was a very poor design choice. However, when you rob a bank, you get to draw a couple of these, which are either 15,000 or 10,000 Nuevo Pesos, and you're trying to get 100,000 of those. You also need to get those and drive back across the border, go to your hometown, and use one of your legal actions to stash them so you won't lose them. If you're arrested, you're gonna need to use a card to get out of jail, or else you're just gonna have to, to pay to get out of jail, or you're gonna have to sit there and slowly wait until there's some way you can get out of prison. So that's how the game works. You're just gonna go back and forth across the border, stealing, robbing from banks, trying not to get caught, and getting enough money to be the first person to win the game. Now who among us hasn't dreamed of going to Mexico and robbing banks? Oh. I watch a lot of Butch and the Sundance Kid. Butch yeah. Cassidy? Yeah. Sundance Kid. Okay, well anyhow, no, but really, he went to Mexico and died, though. <laughs> we don't know they died. The, the, oh, it freeze I'm frame. sorry. I'm sure they survived. Yeah, but <laughs> all, those, all those bullets whizzing through the air would have hit nothing, right? <laughs> okay. But anyhow, but I, I really think this game does an excellent job. We'll start off there, I think, with the theme. I think it does a great job. Yeah. Get a vehicle. Get a get a weapon. The, the tip cards are hilarious. You know, you're going in and... Uh, I mean, the theme could be kind of really off the wall. Right. I mean, to see a pirate, to come in and rob a bank with a sword, <laughs> you you think that maybe, maybe he would be easy to find. Even a security guard <laughs> with like a 22 could win that. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the pirate with the sword was a little bit much. That was kind of going over the top. It didn't really fit the whole bandits theme. I think they just wanted to put a pirate in. Yeah, maybe so. Some surprise was on a ninja. Right. But here's the deal, though. I think that all that theme is good in a lot of aspects, and if you're going into the game looking for that, you're going to like it. It makes sense when you drive around. It makes sense that mm -hmm. you need a sidecar to put in your extra person in. It makes sense that you use different weapons, and the names of the cars and the weapons are pretty cool, you know. Yeah. I'm driving a Beetle coming in with my, you know, Magnum, and it... it, it if Beetles are cool. Beetles are cool. So are fezzes. Okay, but anyhow, <laughs> now look, here's the deal. I, I really like the uh, idea that lost the train of thought. Totally lost it. Here's the deal. I really think that the theme is good, but in a lot of instances, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter usually what kind of vehicle you have. It doesn't matter what kind of weapon you have, other than it's cool. Yeah, they could they could have made it a little bit more immersive if they would have given the the guns or the the cars. Yeah, but that might be too much though, too. A little bit. Well, I don't know. It, it couldn't have been that much. I mean, you know, it, you know, maybe a, a, a muscle car would would if you get caught, it'll it can subtract. <laughs> from your, you know, that you get away, you know. Well, there's so, not a so. lot of, it, it, in the game, there's not a lot of police and shootouts and stuff like right. that. Um, and one thing that I think is very interesting is that the game just automatically elicits bad accents yes. and cheesy phrases. This is pure cheese coming out of this game. Yeah, it's kind of the same, it, it invokes the same feeling as Shadows does for the Monty Python. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. You're it, right. It, it has that same feel. You you look at your character, and you know I played a a luchador, 
Uh, and <laughs> that's true. That you know, he my body have, is the weapon. He didn't have to have a weapon. He is a weapon. You know that type of stuff. And and so it it invokes this you know silliness, this goofiness that really makes the game fun to play. But let's talk about the game now. Yeah. I think we've established the theme is good. Yeah. Is the game good? And I think this is where a toss up is. Right. There's a decent amount of luck in the game. By decent, I mean like a, a dump lot. truck full. Yes. <laughs> but I, I didn't mind it in a lot of cases. Like I thought robbing the deck for a card, that was a cool mechanic. Uh, there's I, luck involved. I didn't like how it ended your turn if you failed though. Cause I mean, it, you, you wait for all these people to do their turn and it comes to you. Okay, I need some cash. I'm gonna try to do it. Boom, you missed. Okay, now you gotta wait. Okay. Longer. So that, I thought that was kind of heavy handed. I had a bigger problem with the total luck of drawing the cards. Yeah. If I draw several hundred dollar bills and Sam's drawing several tens, well, ha ha ha. Yeah, exactly. And you really need a car. You really need a weapon. You'll probably get one of the two with your character. Well, you can't pull a heist without a weapon right. and, and, and a car. So you need both of those, and sometimes you're just basically just drawing cards right. till you get them. Yeah. And, and that can be a real pain in the neck. And someone who gets lucky and gets them both at the beginning can, can get a pretty big head start in everybody else. Yeah. I did like how when you did a bank robbery or did something that you accumulated heat. Uh, heat. And I thought that that was a really neat mechanic. Yeah. And I think I would have actually enjoyed maybe seeing the game stripped down to just that. Hmm. to just getting heat, getting heat off, um, going around and robbing things. The board almost was superfluous. It was there, you're driving around the board, yeah. but it, it just it kind of clogged the game up a bit. And I think that's my biggest problem with the game, is that it felt a little clogged up. If you play with a lot of people, the game is going to be slow, yeah. but very interesting. Right. If you play with a few people, the game will move much faster, but there's almost no interaction between players. I mean, there's a few cards you can play on other people, but for the right. most part, Sam's robbing his banks over here, I'm robbing my banks, we don't even know the other guy exists. It's just a race. So, I like the theme. I did not dislike the game. I just felt like it could have been streamlined. It could have used maybe some more development. So I'm going to give this one um, a neutral. No thumbs up or thumbs down. I did not dislike it. And in the mood, I think I would enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Going, ah, sh shoot my six shooters, coming in to rob the bank. But I would be very cautious to make sure we had a time limit on the end of it. Because the game could, could conceivably be really long and could conceivably be really bad for one player who just never got anything he wanted and just kind of sat there. I thought it would be cool if you could, you could steal money from... Other players? Opponents. Oh yeah, I'll rob you. Like we would like if you drove to your to the same town that your opponent was in, you could you could try to steal money from him and, and there's a certain number of pips you have to roll. I don't know. I thought it would be that's what I kind of th was was what I found lacking about the game. There was not a whole lot of player interaction. Now it could be that we play with a fewer number of players and when you have a full load, there's a whole lot of interaction going on there. And I can see that happening, but uh, at the very least, there is the uh, possibility of not having to interact with anybody, and you still just pull off and win. And right, and you can zoom in and get the and rob the bank and be back. If your yeah. hometown's close to the border, I think it's almost yeah. a much unfair advantage. Right. They have all these spaces to drive all over the board, but mm -hmm. you don't do it half the time. No, you don't because there's no there's no reason to. It it, it would be just prolonging the game, and and this guy's making money, and you're driving all around, you know. Uh, creation and not getting any money, not going any, anywhere near uh, the, the the finish line. So that's one of the things that I didn't like about it. There was a very uh, there was a dearth of of player interaction, but also um, I didn't uh, like, as we said earlier, uh, Tom kind of hit on the fact of how important a car was. Uh, one of the guys' players the characters started with a car that. We didn't re realize how important that was at the beginning, but after the game, we're like, "Well, wow!" He, <laughs> we were struggling trying to get trying to get our cars and trying to get our weapons, and he basically started with both, and that was kind of put him definitely in the lead. Yeah, because you can even sell trade your car in, right. and when you get another car, well, I'm still yeah. trying to get ten dollars. The heat on one car raises. You can just trade it up and pay like fifty bucks or a hundred bucks for for a new uh, for a new car with no heat and. That just put him squarely in the lead, and I don't know if 
Um, you know, if, if, if it's going to be that important, I think all the characters need to start with, with a car just to make it a little bit more even, a little bit more of a level playing ground. So, so what are your thumbs here? Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give this uh, one fist of cash sideways. I'm, I'm neither, here, neither here nor there on the game. It's... I wouldn't mind playing it again. It is fun, if only for the non-game interaction that you have with tossing quotes and bad accents around and that type of thing. Uh, but as far as the game mechanics are concerned, I'd rather play something else. All right. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. <laughs>